Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you very much for the invitation, for the opportunity to present the European Union action in the field of culture and bring somehow Brussels a bit closer to the member state. So indeed, I will present what the EU is doing in the field of culture, and uh, as rightly said before, I'm part of the European Year of Culture Heritage Task Force in the European Commission. As you see, our slogan is our heritage where the past meets the future, and I believe believe that this is quite fitting with this conference today. So I will quickly go through what uh, the EU is doing in the field of culture, what we call the cultural momentum. So where is culture in the European agenda right now? And then I will mention the three latest policy developments um, discussed right now in uh, Brussels in the European institutions. So as you know, uh, culture in the EU, the European Union, let's say, supports uh, the member states in the field of culture and complements their own uh, already national uh, strategies and policies with, for example, uh, preserving the European uh, cultural heritage or helping in cooperating with different national institutions. Uh, because culture, like education or youth and sport, fall under the subsidiarity principle, which means that the EU only supports what the national uh, what the member states uh, are doing. Nevertheless, I'm mentioning here some of the latest policy and program developments that, thanks to the help of the member states, we uh, managed to achieve. The last policy development is the so-called new European Agenda for Culture. I will explain it a bit later in, uh, in uh, two details. In, in two details, yes. Uh, and it was published by the European Commission in May, uh, last May. It's called the New European Agenda for Culture because, of course, there was a European Agenda for Culture before in 2007 where uh, the EU uh, set up priorities in the field of culture. Um, other kind of activities that you can see in this slide are, of course, Creative Europe. Uh, for those that don't know, it's the European Union program to support, uh, economically support, uh, creative and cultural um, policies and activities. And then some other kinds of activities, such as the European uh, Capitals of Culture, the Heritage Label, and, of course, the European Year of Cultural Heritage. So what is this cultural momentum I mentioned about? So, Culture and cultural heritage was not high in the European agenda for many years. Um, and this is unfortunately true. However, uh, it's a couple of years that this uh, is changing. So there is a trend that we are appreciating uh, a lot in my, in my unit, of course. And it started in uh, my home country, Italy, in January 2017, where for the first time ever there was a G7 for culture ministers. And it was there that culture was debated for the first time at this level and um, considered as a key instrument for dialogue. In intercultural dialogue among the people. Um, An very important happening uh, followed this one, which is the so-called leaders meeting. So the head of states and government and prime ministers met in Sweden in Gothenburg um, one year ago in November, and for the first time they adopted this communication uh, mentioning that education and culture are key for Europe's future. And this is why the European Year of Cultural Heritage was launched, one of the many reasons why. So 2018, as rightly mentioned many times today, is the European Year of Cultural Heritage. It's a huge effort um, among all the 28 member states and beyond. We are in total 33 uh, countries working on that. So it's working at national level, but it's also working at European level. We have a committee of stakeholders, uh, including some that co-proposed, co co let's say, the Berlin Call of Action also mentioned today. Um, the Davos Declaration, so very economic setting. For the first time, culture was discussed there. We, we listened today uh, about uh, Baukultur. And again, in Maine, the new European agenda for, cul for culture. And I will go a bit through that in a minute. A couple of quotes that it's not, they are not very common, let's say, in Brussels to hear something like that at a high political level. President Juncker, Juncker, the president of the European Commission last year, said that education and culture are key to the future. And the high representative Federica Mogherini here in Germany, in Frankfurt, said just a few days ago, that, and I'm reading, embracing diversity does not mean giving up to your identity. On the contrary, it means being true to our identity, to our culture. And this is one of the messages I want to convey today. So as I said, 
I'm Italian, I work in, in Belgium and I'm here in Germany, it doesn't mean that these different identities cannot live together. I can be Italian, my, Euro my Italian identity will stay there, this doesn't mean that it cannot work with the European identity, I feel. And that's what I want to stress before. European identity, which is based on our different cultures, overlaps with our own national identity and local identity. Um, so, uh, I'm not going to go th through um, the European Year of Culture heritage as it was already discussed before. I just want to give you an overview uh, which maybe can help you understand a bit more concretely what has been done um, during this year and in which, uh, in which fields. So, as you see, we have four pillars. So, the engagement pillar, the sustainability, the protection and the innovation. And we try to apply culture and cultural heritage policies in all these files. So, since we talked about digitization, you can see the last pillar that is innovation in which, like many activities, took place. I'm mentioning a couple of uh, examples since we, had, we have our UNESCO colleague here today. Um, we have a World Heritage Map that was um, produced in cooperation with the EU. This is in order to support sustainable cultural tourism, so it's available online. If you're not aware of it, I advise you to have a look. And you can go and explore the differences of and the, the beauty of uh, Europe's cultural heritage, but also in a sustainable way. So this is a, uh, an example that shows how sustainability and innovation can work together online. So. The new European Agenda for, cul for Culture, the policy document where we are basing all our, our decisions and our activities this year and beyond, has said adopted in uh, May uh, this year, and it presents a series of action uh, that we are uh, implementing already right now, and I will explain you later why. Two main um, aspects are the social and the economic aspect. So the social, there was a question before about the social aspect in culture. It is indeed very important. Mm, we, I would like to focus on maybe on the, the first two point, valid points because um, of time restrictions. For example, uh, artist mobility. This is something that uh, they, at the EU level we, were, we are very aware uh, about. We realize that artists always um, or very often have to travel under uh, difficult circumstances, under difficult contractual situations, struggle in getting a visa, for example. So for these reasons, we decided to invest on that. So we open a call for um, helping artists to be to, to improve, let's say, mobility of artists. So, um, for example, the EU can support artists traveling for a specific performance and so on. Is it the first time that something like this has been proposed? Uh, we hope that this call will be successful and we hope that this will be the basis of the future um, funding, uh, funding scheme. Another aspect is social inclusion. Um, culture plays a key role in social inclusions and not only when we talk about, I mentioned, for example, refugees and migrants, which is a very actual topic, but also certain categories that fall under the uh, definition of, uh, of poverty or like social categories that struggle, let's say, in being included in the society. Cultural, like music, can play a key role, like uh, cinema and so on. The audiovisual arts can be of great help. So for these reasons, we set up a couple of uh, expert groups. The first one already produced a report. Again, if you're interested, feel free to ask. I'll be happy to give you all the details where the situation has been analyzed, and we hope that to build on that. Second aspect, economic. Let's not forget the economic impact that culture and cultural heritage have at national European level. So that's why we propose to include um, arts into um, education, so in order, to, for example, having creativity, masters at university, but also at schools. So we propose to implement at schools some modules that uh, can help the teachers, for example, to assess also creativity of their pupils. You know, so in order to give more value to what sometimes um, has been left behind, cultural heritage, of course. Um, this is my connection, let's say, to the next, uh, to the next step. Um, it was mentioned before that in the European Agenda for Culture, uh, we um, promised to deliver uh, an action plan for cultural heritage, and this is being developed right now. Uh, my colleagues in Brussels are working on that as I speak. And this action plan for cultural heritage, we hope, will be used as, um, widely by the member states in order to see how we can actually improve um, 
the uh, protection and the uh, support of cultural heritage. In my file, I follow closely heritage at risk, as said before, in the specifically illicit trafficking of cultural goods. This is something that maybe, you know, it doesn't really fit with the topic of this, um, of this conference, but uh, Digitization is key also in this aspect, for example. We have a huge amount of uh, cultural goods that leave and get into the European Union illegally that can, I don't know, are being looted from uh, Nepal or from third countries and then get into EU without, and nobody tracks them. So um, we are also working hard with UNESCO again to try to digitize uh, artwork from also elsewhere, not only in uh, Europe, in order to, be, uh, to help police and customs officials to identify uh, if an artwork has been looted if it goes through the uh, EU Customs Union. For example, there is a military force in Italy, the Carabinieri, that have, has a specific um, let's say, a corp for uh, protection of cultural heritage. And they are implementing an app, digitizing like artwork in order to um, help, as I said, the customs to, um, to identify looted art. Um, again, um, external aspect of the culture of cultural heritage is also important. Yes, we are focusing here on the EU, the 28, but let's not forget also our neighbor countries. For example, we are focusing very much on the let's say, eastern and southern neighborhood, uh, Creative Europe, the funding program I mentioned before, um, allowed recently Armenia and Tunisia to join the program, and we are quite happy about that, and we are uh, focused on the Western Balkans as well. Digital for Culture is the last point I want to tackle on the European Agenda for, for Culture. So we uh, realize the importance of digitization again, and that's, these are some of the proposals we put forward in the Agenda for Culture, which will be also uh, included in the new action plan I will talk about in a second. So this um, action plan, why are we developing an action plan for cultural heritage. Because we don't want that at the end of 2018, all the efforts made at national, European, international level on the European Year of Cultural Heritage will be gone. We hope that this year will have a, a legacy that will have something, will be like an input for, uh, for future policies, not only cultural policies, but in general, European policies to keep this momentum I was, I was talking before. The main message we want to con con convey, and we are developing specific actions, very concrete actions on that, um, that culture does not need to be only in cultural policies indeed, that should be mainstreamed along all uh, EU and national policies in a long-term approach, because as I said, uh, culture and cultural heritage has a huge social economic impact. Um, the 10 European initiatives are the four pillars I showed, uh, showed you before. They were a great starting point. We could develop a series of very um, interesting activities. We have seen uh, in Germany uh, many of them. Um, but still, we had some gaps, and that's what we tried to fill with this, with this action plan. The action plan will be um, proposed by the end of the year by our commissioner, and um, we hope that will be uh, a, good, a good sign from a EU perspective. I will conclude on uh, funding. So Creative Europe is the, f is the program of the EU that supports cultural and creative sectors, as I said. And um, we are right now in a period of 2014-2020 where we allocated, it's a very small percentage of the European budget, uh, the 529 million euro. Um, we proposed, and we are very proud of this, that for the next program, this should be increased. And 20, it was accepted 27% in comparison to the, to the current program. So as you can see, 650 million euro in the next um, uh, program, which is 2021. 27. The structure will be the same, so if you're familiar with the program, there are uh, three strands, the culture strands, the media strands, and the cross-sectorial strands. This will be uh, the same, and the objectives as well. So we try with this uh, program to promote European cooperation, and we help um, cultural organizations to get in touch with their partners also in other, in other countries. Um, also, uh, to conclude, um, let's say that uh, Creative Europe is not only the, 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 the only way to get funds in a culture at European level. 
We also had, uh, we have Horizon 2020, which is the biggest program of research and innovation uh, at EU level. And uh, Horizon allowed um, 100 million euro just for cultural heritage, but also some other um, uh, programs like Erasmus support cultural heritage. Uh, during the year, we had 5 million call uh, that won under Creative Europe for um, projects in order to support uh, uh, cultural heritage, and we selected 29 projects. We opened, like, a few days ago the last call, so if you're interested, I would advise you as well to get in touch. It's a call on cooperation project. The deadline to apply is on the 11th of December uh, for small and medium projects to support uh, culture and uh, creative sectors. And you can find all the information on uh, Creative uh, Europe website. Thank you very much. <laughs>